I was a filly. The changing of the seasons was always a very fun time. All the pegasi of Cloudsdale were so busy bringing in the new season and all the things that made each of them special. When I became a mare and moved to Ponyville, they had a lot of fun traditions about the spring equinox, or as they called it, the winter wrap-up. Every pony and other creatures seem to treat the changing of the seasons with a special significance. And that hasn't changed, even after the bombs fell. Even though it's hard to see the sun through the cloud barrier, we can still see the sunrise and sunset. Everything goes from the same stale gray to a dark midnight blue or green depending on where you live. The weather in the wasteland is a lot crazier from when the Pegasi used to control it. All the balefire and other weird, evil magics aside, it's almost like nature has reasserted itself. It took the weather back from the ponies who bent it to our wills for so many thousands of years. The same thing is true with the seasons and things that make them change, the sun and the moon. Without the princesses moving the sun and the moon anymore, the seasons are mostly controlled by how long the sun and the moon stay in the sky. One day a year is the longest ever, well, that year. It is when the sun stays in the sky the longest and the night is the shortest. Historically, that was the start of summer. Then there are two days in the year called equinoxes, when the sun and the moon have equal time in the sky. There is one that marks the beginning of spring, or rather, the winter wrap-up, and then there is one that marks the beginning of autumn. I still see ponies commemorate these days and seasons occasionally, although it's not that common anymore. It's really hard to see the seasons change because the wasteland is so chaotic. Things just seem to freak out at random times. One thing I still notice though in my many centuries flying all over Equestria is that everyone still recognizes the winter solstice. Now, growing up in Cloudsdale, I only thought of the winter solstice as that day my dad would be gone all night taking snow clouds all over the place. Other than that, I didn't think much of it since Heartwarming Eve was right around the corner. However, the winter solstice means so much more to so much of the world. When I was growing up, I had a friend who was a reindeer. She lived up in Nordenhoof, which is way far to the north from here. No matter where you are reading this, basically, it's still north of you. Nordenhoof was beautiful. My Uncle Frostwing married a reindeer and they lived up there by my aunt's family. Whenever I went up to visit them, I would always get to see my friend Elby. Her name was Lingonberry, but everyone just called her LB, or L-B, for short. I haven't been up there since the Great War because even in the old days it was very cold, but these days the blizzards and storms are so harsh, I don't think anyone can fly up there, let alone survive. Plus, my Uncle Frostwing probably isn't around to see anymore. Elby and her family weren't ponies, so they didn't celebrate heartwarming as much as we did. Instead, they had a whole holiday celebration around the winter solstice, or midwinter, as they called it. Elby talked about how they believed the winter solstice signified the death of the sun, which then gave birth to a new sun at the beginning of the new year after the dark nights of winter. They would start weeks ahead of time by cutting down a big evergreen tree, then decorating it. It's called a heartwarming tradition, but we actually copied it from them a long time ago. On the day of the solstice, they would slowly take all the decorations off of the tree and place them around the house. Then they would cut up the tree and start a roaring fire that kept the whole house warm through the long, dark night of the solstice. Once the tree was burned, they would keep the decorations out all winter, waiting for the pine cones to fall and new tree saplings to appear. This happened right around the time of winter wrap-up and the start of spring. The idea was that the reindeer decorated the tree to symbolize all the fortune and gifts they had received throughout the year. That not only meant good times with other reindeer and ponies, but gifts from nature like harvests that they had finished and stored away. 
Burning the tree was symbolic of using the bountiful harvest to survive through the long, dark northern winters. They kept the decorations hung around the house as a way to remember their blessings and keep them humble while they waited for winter to end. The winter solstice, along with the midwinter celebration, was about making it through those dark times. Just like heartwarming is for ponies, it's about how they've come together to help each other survive through the cold and the snow. That's what a lot of us are stuck in right now. A very long, nuclear winter, like that old song talked about. The worst creatures out there in the wasteland seem to celebrate that fact. One reason most ponies still recognize the winter solstice is because during the longest night of the year, all the raiders seem to get extra crazy. Many groups out there would attack settlements or even each other, like they had been waiting for the solstice to act. I don't fully understand why they do this. A long night does give you more time to do bad things in the darkness, but it doesn't seem like a conscious choice. LB would say that their traditions were about surviving the harshness of the elements. For reindeer up in Norton Hoof, the winter meant long blizzards, piles of snow, and freezing cold that could kill you. They survived off of the foods that they had stored during their harvests. The death of the sun mean that the things that hid in the darkness were given free reign to torment. They were the hardest times of the year, even in the oldest days, long before the Great War. However, no matter how long those winters were, they made it through the spring. They had those decorations in their house to keep their hope alive that the sun would shine again. One thing I still remember LB telling me is that hope is essential. It wasn't just about wishing that the winter would end, it was about fighting every day to see it through. It was about every last piece of firewood conserving every last berry and stalk of wheat. Those that didn't go out and bring in a tree to keep decorate also didn't have a tree to burn to keep warm. As a filly, I didn't think too much about the meaning behind those traditions, but I definitely do now. Who knows, maybe the reindeer have survived up there. Maybe they were more prepared than all of us. I hope so. That's one of the many reasons I continue to press on. Even without skin, or even without feathers, and even without a tongue. I still have friends. I still have that warmth. One day, when this nuclear winter is over, I'm going to see for myself.